Yeah. So good morning, everybody. I hope you can see my screen now. Yeah. Anish, can you see my screen? Yes, then I can see the screen. Okay. So, yeah, today the topic is, uh, let's continue with the um, same uh, discussion we made yesterday. So, until here, I hope you understood. Let me quickly uh, recap what we had discussed yesterday. We had discussed about the name node, data nodes, clients, mm -hmm. rack, mm -hmm. how does it uh, communicate uh, um, among these. Uh, uh, who, is, who is that? Can you go mute, please? Rohit? Yeah. Yes, sir. Go mute. So we had discussed all these um, uh, architecture yesterday and uh, how they are communicated with each, uh, e each other yesterday. And uh, we also discussed about the, how the data was split among the um, data nodes, uh, how much size, replication factors, and everything we, we had discussed. But today, we are gonna discuss about little further inside the architecture. So, so are you recording this one? Uh -huh. Are you recording this one? Yeah. So over here, the Hadoop uh, in architecture, if we further inspect inside the architecture, what we see is the name node and the slave nodes we had discussed. So how the name node works with the slave node, what are the components inside the name node we have got? Let's quickly go through it. So in the name node, we have got two important things, master node and a job tracker. So what is a master node? Master node hold the entire information about your slaves and the data nodes. And the job tracker is actually hold the task assigned to the slave nodes. Now, let me tell you what that means. So here name node, Basically, what we know, name node just hold the metadata about the data nodes, metadata about the blocks, metadata about the um, you know heartbeats of the data nodes. All these information we hold it right. That is a master node. So that all information is saved, retained in the name node. Apart from that, name node, which is basically a master node, okay, and apart from that. It also have got additional component is called a job tracker. What is the job tracker? Job tracker basically, as soon as we receive a request from the client, that first name node, the information is first received. I mean, the client information is first approaches the name node saying that this is what the request is received from the customer to perform this job. The information, the required information, where it is stored, and the series of uh, you know uh, information so that information is provided by the name node so as soon as we get the information client directly won't go and get the job from slaves or data nodes slaves and data nodes here both are synonyms okay they, we use interchangeably so as soon as we receive uh, i mean we get the information there is a component inside the name node called job tracker so this job tracker understands, okay, this is the request received from the client. Now I need to get this job done from the slave nodes. So that job tracker will take that work and assign it to the slave nodes one after another. Okay, so that job will be split across the nodes in parallel. Okay, now here we need to understand the whole Hadoop architecture is not just used to store the data into the small pixels, small blocks inside the slave nodes. It also performs the requested job in parallel. It split the whole job into the 
small components and share across the data nodes or a slave nodes, right? That is the job. We, are, we also call them as a map reduce job. We learn those things in the further stages, but now just stick to this, um, what we are discussing. So this job is further divided into multiple parallel processes and assign it to the slave nodes. Okay. Now, as soon as the task partitioned task is assigned to the slave node, there is a concept called a task tracker. Okay. Inside the slave node task tracker. So this job tracker will hold what is the job to be performed and how many slave nodes were assigned and what is the status of the job tracker. Okay. And as soon as the job is done, the job tracker will capture the result of that task. Now the assigned task from the slave node, there is a concept called task tracker, which is the counterpart from the slave node that pick up, pick up the assigned task and execute it using the map reduce concept inside the slave node. Once the job is performed, once the job is executed, the result is updated back to the job tracker. So likewise, each slave nodes have got one task tracker and that task, task, task tracker is responsible for execution of job and report back the task job tracker. So that is how all the slave nodes work together. Okay, so it is as simple as that. It is as simple as that. The whole data is split across the slave nodes. One process, the client requested job is split, split across the multiple parallel processes and assign it to the slave nodes and execute the job done from, from the slave nodes. That is how the Hadoop process works rapid fast. One task is divided by 10 systems, 100 systems, and all these jobs in, runs in parallel and the result are updated just in fraction of minutes, hours, depends on the size, back to the job tracker. So that is how it works. Any questions so far? No, sir. Great. Now, don't look at this um, HDFS architecture. Just uh, try to understand what I'm going to speak about. Today, I'm going to talk about the... Today, I'm going to talk about the... the name node and its uh, backup nodes okay so here we had discussed so far about data nodes how the name node communicate with the data node heartbeat balancing we discussed everything now inside the you know in this um, header level okay over here in this in this um, uh, side uh, we basically have got a name node and other functionality called secondary name node okay the secondary name node is not represented in, in this slide okay but just keep this uh, concept and try to understand the concept and if you have got any questions please do ask me now okay. now here name, name node we understand what is the function of it now there is a concept called secondary name node okay secondary name node any kind of a guess what is secondary name node Anish? Secondary node? Yeah, anybody. Yeah. It's a worker node. Mm -hmm. What is a data node then? Secondary name node is similar to the similar to the name node. It is just a replica kind of thing. And when the primary name node, uh, when it goes down then the secondary name node will comes up and it takes the job partially correct partially correct okay so a small change here secondary name node can quickly remind us what does it mean is okay it used to be called a secondary name node but we call now as it as a checkpoint node we no longer call this as a secondary node we call it as checkpoint node write it down Okay, now what is a checkpoint node? 
basically when when each time nemad performs its job the data about the data its transactions everything is stored in the name node now all this information name node just can't store like this what it does it creates an image called fs image file system image okay this file system image is just like our windows uh, iso image okay now all these information whatever the data about data metadata as well as edit logs the second com uh, component or uh, document uh, you know runtime document is called edit log fs image and edit log these are the two informations we hold in the name node okay so the entire hdfs operation information is recorded in the fs image and the latest transactions are loaded in the edit node so what happens all this information is stored in the ram okay now what if if this um, name node is crashes okay now we will discuss about what basically the checkpointing node performs what is the use of it okay now first assumption what if if the name node is crashed out okay uh, rohit can you go mute okay sir so what if if the name node is crashed then what happens all these entire uh, fs image edit logs whatever we have got is going to be crashed is going to be deleted now the entire business is at stake so therefore what checkpoint does is checkpoint will not replace the name node if the name node you know crashes the checkpoint will not take care of the name node job instead what it does it concentrates on the is image and edit log okay so periodically what it does it uh, update the fs image it takes the copy of i is uh, fs image and that fs image is created a copy and it has got edit log so that edit log is again replicated and update the is image fs image fs image is nothing but entire metadata as well as the edit log okay so the reason why is number 1 if both the information is stored in the single name node if the name node is crashed then obviously we lose the entire data so in that case what we carefully do is we just uh, use the you know secondary name node help and we update the information with the fs image and we put it now that way if the name node is crashed and immediately if we could uh, you know manually fix the problem and we resume the in a name node processes or if we resume the hdfs and it will pick up the help of the checkpoint which of the fs image is created and that fs image is obviously used to run the reboot the whole system that where we don't lose the business right some he, uh, until here we are fine with it okay one problem is sorted out but followed by this solution there is one more problem is arised you see not only um you know each time not only um the name node is crashed this process is not uh, executed i mean when the, when the um name node is crashed not just that time this process of check checkpoint name node is executed when we reboot the system okay when we start our cluster then what it does it go to the safe mode right in the safe mode what it does it verifies the all the systems verifies the data nodes heartbeat and everything okay and also it reaches the fs image and until the system is ready to function until it will stay in the read only mode but what happens when your cluster is massive massive size then in that case what will happen it takes too much time right it takes too much time to process it it, it takes too much time to get ready for the operation until then the business is halt right all the requests cannot be executed cannot be processed therefore now this is one of the biggest problem right then what it does i'm just checking the notes
Okay. I'm just checking if any point missed. Right. So what happens? The FS image is updated by the checkpoint node. Now what happens because of the massive size, it takes too much of time, right? Then what it does, the checkpoint will hold this IS image aside and update the edit log. So if the edit log is small, if the FS image is small, then obviously name node rebooting will become fast. Therefore, the checkpoint will help the name node to execute the rebooting process quite fast, okay? But however, there is also one more challenge if we, especially when we handle with FS image and edit log. The input output, output operations of this FS image operation, uh, updating the, overwriting the FS image, the ongoing activity, merging the edit log. This is basically, uh, you know, CPU intensive operation. It consumes a lot of operation. And remember, when this operation is happening, the HDFS is on ideal state, will become ideal, it won't function. So again, that is a kind of a challenge, right? So in that case, what it does and how the HD, uh, when how the, uh, the checkpointing does is, the same way how name node split the job across the slave nodes, the secondary name node, which also have got checkpointing node, okay, and the dependent nodes or slave nodes inside the, sec uh, um, the secondary name node, it assigns this task to the checkpoint nodes. Those Joe's checkpoint nodes will split and perform the job of merging IS nodes, uh, FS nodes and edit logs. So therefore, this is how the checkpoint will execute the job of getting the data, runtime run or latest um, you know, uh, edit log, latest updates of the data nodes, um, metadata and update the FS image and uh, the task is assigned to its checkpoint nodes and get the very latest um, version of uh, FS image and try to minimize the size of the edit log which is in the name node. Until here, any question? No, sir. Hmm. Now, how often, now how often this checkpoint node trigger this job? How often? Updating the FS image or edit log. That is two, two ways we could do it. Number one, every one hour. It's like a batch schedule, okay? It's a recurring job every one hour or every 1 million transactions. Again, this is configurable. The default is every 1 hour or 1 million transactions, whichever the condition met. If 1 million records uh, are completed in less than 1 hour, then that job will trigger. If that's not the case, if the 1 million is not filled, it executes the job every 1 hour, whichever comes first. Right? Now here, what we need to remember about the checkpoint checkpoint doesn't perform the name node job it just take the fs image from the main memory and merges the edit log okay and we need to remember name node periodically get the um, status update from the you know slaves but secondary node won't get that update still name node becomes the primary secondary name node is just retaining a backup data backup job it doesn't hold any uh, kind of a um, you know, heartbeat or a status update. It doesn't get any information about it. And um, yeah, as I mentioned, like uh, name node is not, uh, secondary name node is not a kind of a uh, substitute for name node. Right, now the next two point is backup node. What do you see on the screen is a backup node. What is the backup node? Any idea? Backup node. Mm -hmm. The replicant. Hmm? <coughs> the replicant. Hmm. Okay. Now here, the backup node is another uh, kind of a concept. What it does is, it is just like a checkpoint node. Okay, it performs the same job of, uh, in a similar job of, uh, what a checkpoint does but the only difference is it is not exactly 
a checkpoint. That means it backup nodes always synchronizes with the name node. Okay, always synchronizes with the name node and maintains the in-memory up-to-date file system namespace as a backup. Okay, so as a backup, it is always stay connected with the name node and copies the name node metadata information and edit load edit um, log information and these edit log apply inside the applies inside the backup node on its own copy of namespace memory so as a backup as a recovery then backup node doesn't need to download any fs image or any kind of edit logs from the um, you know active name node in order to create a checkpoint i mean checkpoint is already takes the fs image and keep the edit log but backup image job is not to hold the data and keep a backup job okay it, it doesn't do any backup job what it does whatever the on the moment name node has got in terms of uh, fs image or edit edit log whatever it has got in the name node it just takes a backup okay just takes a backup and just keep it ready okay and backup node checkpoint process is very more efficient as it needs to be uh, save the entire namespace into the local fs image file and reset the edit log so uh, it is as rapid as fast as like a name node so it is simply like you know a kind of a disaster kind of a thing so here whether you if you look into the whole context the backup node or checkpoint node none of these two are substitute to the name node okay so this name node is ultimately a primary uh, process to control the entire data to hold the data but whereas the checkpoint backup nodes these are just supporting uh, you know systems okay now here what we need to understand here is the whole process the backup and uh, checkpointing node are just additional tools subst additional tools supporting tools for the name node um, and cannot um, you know replaces the name node now if you look into you know this uh, whole architecture do you feel this is somehow not really safe i mean there is a possibility of risk do you agree with me yeah okay what risk you have what risk uh, uh, do you see maybe hacking hacking huh? Mm -hmm. Anything else? A loss of data. Loss of data. What does it mean? Loss of data. Mm. I'm not sure. Okay. So here, what it happens is, if the name node is crashed, okay, if the name node is crashed, what it happens is, it goes to the secondary name node, and we have to manually process it, basically. Remember this number one challenge. If the name node is crashed or broken, we manually administrator, Hadoop administrator, have to fix the problem. And then when they restart it, manually the updated uh, you know, working name node will go to the secondary name node and get the copy of that name node. And it goes to the safe mode and pick up the edit logs and uh, identify what was the very latest transactions and pick up those. And run through it okay and uh, the and also in terms of maintenance for example the ram the capacity of the secondary name node backup name node are equivalent as name node same size of ram same set of capability we need to maintain okay hardware uh, infrastructure we need to maintain i mean that is fine maintenance is not a big big problem but the challenge is we need to do it manually okay so here the important thing is if fs image is lost then checkpoint is used until then the name node is reliable if the name node is broken we manually have to do it so this is the challenge if the name node is broken until somebody you know solves the problem business will be at stake that is the primary challenge okay we get the we have the backup we have got the information so there is we have got enough security saying we don't lose any kind of a data okay but however if that is lost then obviously the business is hard until the problem is uh, sorted out so that is the biggest challenge therefore 
whatever the architecture we see right now here is considered as HDFS or not HDFS Hadoop HDFS is basically wrong thing use the Hadoop Hadoop 1.0 version okay this was the first version 1.0 version of HDFS or Hadoop architecture not HDFS Hadoop architecture okay now what is the Hadoop 2.0 will explore that in a minute but before to that I would like to cover two important things okay balancer and rack awareness so what is balancer we already discussed about this uh, concept very briefly so basically HDFS data might not always be placed in uniform across the data nodes okay therefore what an administrator do the administrators get various tools and uh, various tools that to provide the analyze the data block placement okay and making sure um, where the data is placed how much data is uh, scattered where the you know most of the data is located and um, you know how many other data nodes are you know left blank so all these information uh, an administrator can able to check with the command called fsck okay so this uh, i mean forget about fsck part okay so basically administrator can see all these uh, information and uh, then basically what it happens when when the administrator notices that okay the amount of data is scattered in this area then that will shuffle the you know data wherever the data is uh, uh, excessively for, uh, piled up that data will be moved from one data node to another data node manually i mean manual instance it's kind of a, again a job but remember when this job performs hdfs is extensively engaged okay how do process is extensively engaged because the whole blocks of data needs to be replaced from one um, data node to another data node which is a, is a big job so that is um, one of the challenge but just please remember there is a concept called balancer okay this balancer will perform uh, this policy is basically to keep one of one of the replicas of block on the same node as the node that is writing in i mean like it it moves from one system to one data node to another data node and uh, right so this is basically the concept of balancer okay this kind of a job will be performed when the hdfs is uh, you know on a particular stage where we meet in the amount of size is reached a threshold let's say if, if we assume 50 percent of the data nodes are filled then this balance uh, balancer task should be triggered to avoid the disaster to avoid the loss of data okay any questions no sir reka okay sir what is rake awareness rekha do you have any idea no hmm? don't google it for me but uh, try to analyze if you if at all you, you are aware of the rake awareness okay means uh, if any data uh, uh, interrupt to the rack it got alert maybe the rack awareness basically rack awareness is nothing but the whole data nodes are stored or kept inside a rack okay so combination of multiple systems combination of multiple data nodes are nothing but racks so this is the hadoop cluster has got many racks so basically hdfs assigns a unique reference number to the data nodes as well as the racks therefore the system name node hadoop can quickly understand where the data is located in which rack data is, this data node is, um, is existed in one rack node we have got uh, sorry in one rack we have got 10 data nodes or 100 data nodes and each rack node or each rack will have a unique reference number therefore the system to identify easily quickly to locate it this rack awareness uh, is helpful okay now this is how the you know structure works number one name node will identify how many racks we have got each rack will have one reference number and inside each rack how many data nodes we have got so each data node will have a reference number so the tracking will become quite easy rather to combine all the data nodes directly 
understand that is simply rack awareness okay okay any questions no hmm. right we have already discussed about the recovery mode any questions on recovery node recovery mode rohit what is recovery no, mode actually i am traveling sir i am going to home hmm okay yeah actually so, anish, you, you? i went for the hospital anish can i ask you what is a recovery mode anish shall i try to tell you yeah it uh, it if the name name not got crash and this record not get to get the get the, the i mean it it helps to get the recovery transaction recovery mode or it requires the uh, data from the replicant okay so basically recovery mode is like a when <laughs> when your data is something like you know safe mode or uh, you know backup kind of a thing what it happens is when your whole metadata with the name node stores if that is correct if that is lost then the concept of recovery mode comes into the picture so here what we do we keep all these uh, recovery content i mean metadata about the you know the name node information stored in a particular location every time okay not just in backup backup data not just checkpoint not just fs image all this information about uh, the metadata is stored you will be configured the administrator basically configure a location inside the hadoop uh, in a separate machine so that information is stored in a particular system if we remember whenever um, when our laptop uh, is crashed or rebooting or have got trouble we normally what we go we go recovery mode in the recovery mode the windows try to fix its problems on its own it refer to the uh, default uh, windows mode reka is my understanding correct yeah i think like you 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 a bit sleepy mm. <laughs> reka i want you to windows. engage i want you to engage so what is the recovery mode in a laptop restore the no previous uh, data Ro rohit i just hold on i want reka to engage with me um, my job here is to everybody get maximum what you supposed to reka yes rajan yeah tell me what is the recovery mode in laptop no idea no okay so recovery mode is basically a windows copy so when our laptop can't fix the problem on its own it goes to the i mean when we restart it we see two options right recovery mode normal mode without network two three options when we restart the windows okay so by default is a normal mode okay so the, likewise the recovery mode basically it's a copy of your uh, metadata so all this information is stored in that location so when your entire data metadata is corrupted then the, the safe mode is basically go to that location and pick up the data pick up the um, name node metadata and everything therefore that rescue uh, the continuity of the business okay so this is how the recovery mode comes into the picture and basically uh, there is a command if you want to start the name node in the recovery mode the way how we do it uh, in a Uh, normal windows name node hyphen recover 
that is a simple command so that the whole name node if if it doesn't work then it goes and pick up the data from the name node see all these things is a conceptually for you but this job is performed by the hadoop administrators in the system okay in your project so that is not your job and we are not also cover that covering that administrator job administrator is something different so you don't have to you know concern about it this is what the whole task about the name node backup node checkpoint and all this stuff okay any questions no sir. i'll quickly go through it so this is the, we also called as a classic hadoop structure of 1.0 version so when the job is received the first name node will have a job tracker and a scheduler job tracker what it does it manages the map reduce process okay so basically job tracker uh, maps before reducers rerun upon failure i mean it, it's simply like you know job tracker is it holds the entire jobs it received from the client and then what it does scheduler will take the, will take the work okay that means scheduler will see how many data nodes we have got okay and uh, how many um, are working and then um, it split across the whole job and assign it to the uh, each and every node data node and inside the uh, you know data node we have got two concepts one is a task tracker task tracker communicates to the job tracker okay then here this task tracker updates the status of the whatever the job that has been assigned okay and uh, get the update so this as soon as the task tracker receives a job what it does there is a concept called a map and reduce don't worry about the map and reduce concept right now we have got a detailed conversation about it detailed concept about it so we will learn that precisely map and reduce is two parallel or subsequent processes okay as soon as the job tracker assigns a job scheduler will checks who are available to pick up this job this job and who are engaged right now who are available it's simply a resource manager like a project manager and thus that task will be assigned to the slave nodes and as soon as the task is assigned a project manager and the module manager which is a task tracker okay module manager each uh, module will have a lead right that module lead okay that module lead will pick up and he will be a point of contact to the project manager and the module manager will assign um, i mean that that job will be again further split into map map will process mapping processes the mapping will learn what is that mapping mapping is like a combination shuffle the data accordingly and finally reduce is the following process once the map is finished reducing task will be executed and once the reduce task it's a final process so once the final process is finished then task tracker module lead get informed about the task whether it is failure or success and that task tracker inform back to the job tracker and if i mean basically to the scheduler not directly to the job tracker scheduler now if the job is success then it report back to the job if the job is failed then what it does is checks if any other node is available and then the same task is assigned to that node to that slave and execute the same way how it worked with the uh, initial uh, task tracker and um, try to uh, get the job delivered uh, completely so this is the simple um, map reduce process okay this is called map reduce process how the task are executed inside hadoop 1.0 version any questions okay so take up for you anish uh, no such good right do you see anything over here on my screen any difference in the architecture yeah the yeah mm -hmm. the yarn is coming here hmm and uh, resource manager 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Any other? Uh, Rekha, have you seen this slide before? Rekha, have you seen this slide before? I, I can't hear you. No, Sriji. No, okay. Right, so here, this slide is basically the latest current version, Hadoop 2.0 version slide. So what we had seen before, this is the version one. Okay, this is how it used to be before. But now there were challenges we discussed in the past. What is that? If the name node breaks down, we have to do it manually, right? So we have to do it manually. And there is no uh, alternative or automated process that the second standby name node can recover the work and execute the job. Right, we have to do it manually, and until then, business will be on stake. Okay, that is the biggest challenge we found in the in the in the in the previous one dot version. At the same time, this is also called high non high availability. In the sense, uh, we can't guarantee that the Hadoop cluster runs twenty four seven. There is a uh, possibility that the business may on hold. And also the job tracker, uh, active. I mean, this uh, name node performs not only the uh, the status update, all the metadata information, but also job tracking information. That means um, what is the task to be performed, map reduce job, scheduler, all these things performed inside the name node, right? So mm-hmm. this is also again a challenge. I mean, name node is engages a lot. So if the name node crashes, there's jobs and everything is also on hold. So entire business is on hold. So therefore, there is a revised version called Hadoop 2.0 version. And this is also called high availability name node, high availability. That means we can increase number of name nodes horizontally. Okay, so here this is horizontal. You see active name node, standby name node. You see here, yes. when for the first time we discussed a secondary name node, so-called alias checkpoint, we thought of uh, it is the alternative uh, to the name node. No, that was not alternative. Standby node is the alternative. Okay. Standby node is the alternative for the name node. So if the name node dies or crashes immediately, the standby node fix the uh, I mean get the picture okay so this is the uh, you know revised version of the uh, Hadoop cluster so most of the projects so far we um, I mean either uh, existing projects or new projects are more or less are in the C- in the current version of this architecture so keep this in mind okay okay so just one question. Yeah. So the standby name node is behalf of the backup node which we use in the HPFC one architecture. Hmm. Come again. Uh, the standby name name node what we are using is the uh, in behalf of uh, backup name node are we using it in the second architecture? No, no, no. That is different. This is different. Okay. Backup node. Backup node is completely is a parallel to the name node. Okay, it doesn't store the data just okay. because the whatever name node have got and it stores in in memory. Okay, but whereas okay. this okay. is a name node is completely but if you see the difference here, name node, I mean data node directly coordinate with the backup node. Backup. Okay, what the data nodes does? Data nodes update the tasks, update the heartbeat. Uh, status report to the name node but here backup node is not getting an update from them okay the absence of that information you can't perform the job it is just a, a kind of a standby but not fully a standby okay so it won't recover you in case the name node dies but here in this case the da- secondary name node connecting with the data nodes all the data nodes over here right so if the active node dies the standby node connects with the data node and it gets the information from the data node for example the same point heartbeat status report 
whatever we get from data nodes uh, both the systems get, you know get the status data node job is to update the status report in the only just to the name node in the version 1 but here in the version 2 data node job is to update the heartbeat task status both to the active node and the st uh, standby node if you have got only two then the data node have to update two if you have got four or three we just have to do it okay that is how the job is ultimate job is to handle the um, business i mean handle the recovery handle the disaster so all these backup fs image all these headaches will go off okay okay we will discuss this concept from tomorrow this uh, 2.0 version okay because there are yeah hello yes okay so we'll discuss this concept of a 2.0 version tomorrow because i would like to show you something uh, very important therefore i would like to take five ten minutes of your time okay yeah right is this okay if i hold it uh, uh discussion of hadoop until here reka and anish Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay sure. So now I would like to show you some, ask you something. Now, Reka, Anish, and uh, Rohit, how are you guys taking the notes? Notes? Mm-hmm. They were just writing the points.